Hey, it's Tay Brene, and welcome back to my channel. Let's go ahead and jump into what is black exploitation. So, black exploitation was an ethnic subgenre film that emerged in the U.S. during the early 1970s, and a lot of these films. They were very popular, but had a lot of backlash for the disproportionate numbers of stereotypical film characters showing bad or questionable motives, including most roles as criminals resisting arrest. However, this genre does rank among the first in which black characters and communities are the heroes and subjects of film and television, rather than just the sidekicks, villains, or victims of brutality. This genre coincides with the rethinking of race relations in the 1970s. To familiarize yourself with some of the films that came about during this time, it was things like Shaft, Hitman, Superfly, Blackula, Coffee, Black Caesar, and many more. But let's get into the cast of these movies and where are they now? Let's start with the queen herself. Pam Greer is her stage name, but her name is Pamela Suzette Greer. She was born May 26, 1949. And she was the queen of black exploitation film, starring in films like Coffee, Foxy Brown, The Big Doll House, Black Mama, White Mama. Miss Greer was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina to a homemaker and a mechanic. This small town young lady not only went on to be a hit in the 70s, but even to this day, she is still starring in hit movies and hit TV shows like movies like Just a Ride, um, Snow Day, Bones. Bad Grandmas, Palms. She's also made guest appearances on Law and Order, Justice League, The L Word, This Is Us, Bless This Mess. And on top of that, she was in Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. So Ms. Greer has gone on to have an amazing, extensive, long history in this entertainment business. Next, we have the handsome Richard Roundtree. Richard Roundtree was born July 9th, 1942 in New York. And he is noted as being the first black action hero for his portrayal of the private detective John Shaft in a 1971 film. And it had four more sequels released after that from 1972 to 2019. Roundtree went on to star in many movies in the 90s, but he really didn't get his spark until the 2000s. And then he has this amazing career and he is still gracing our TV screens today. He was in movies like What Men Want, The Shaft Remake, Haunting of the Mary Celeste, Veil, Go Beyond the Lens. He's also played in many roles on TV series like Magnum P.I., Murder, She Wrote, A Different World, Amen, Beverly Hills 90210, The Fresh Prince, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, As the World Turns, Grey's Anatomy, Soul Food, Lincoln Heights, and the list just goes on. And Many people may know him from playing Mary Jane's dad on Being Mary Jane. And he's also in a show that comes on Netflix called Family Reunion. So he has a long history and we are so grateful for his iconic role in The Shaft. Now let's talk about the notorious Jim Brown. Formerly known as James Nathaniel Brown. He is a former American football player sports analyst, and actor. So besides his amazing football career, he starred in Black Gun and The Dirty Dozen, Mars Attacks, Any Given Sunday, and one of my favorite films, The Original Gangsters, where he starred alongside Pam Greer, Richard Roundtree, Fred Williamson, all really big stars during this time. 
Jim Brown is depicted in the 2020 film One Night in Miami, which is a story based on true events about Muhammad Ali, Sam Cooke, Malcolm X, and Jim Brown himself, and talking about how they were successful black men during the civil rights movement and how they contributed to history. Jim Brown is 84 years old and still making headlines in 2021. On to Fred Williamson. Again, another one of our original gangsters and also known as the Hammer. He was a NFL football player as well and an actor. And he's known for his roles in Black Caesar, Hell Up in Harlem, Three the Hard Way, Hammer, and The Man Bolt. We also seen Williamson play in TV shows like Being Mary Jane, uh, Real Husbands of Hollywood, Bodyguard Wars, Pushing Daisies, Vegas Vampires, Knight Riders. So we see him still on our TV screens today. Again, shout out to our black exploitation actors because they are still around and living. He is 82 years old. Next we have Judy Pace, born June 15th, 1942. And she is also known for her role in black exploitation films. She starred in Cotton Comes to Harlem in 1970 and was a prominent actress during that decade. It was noted to be one of the most beautiful women ever to appear on our screens. After being dubbed the personification of black beauty in the 70s, she continued to thrive. She's been on dozens of shows from Kung Fu to Sanford and Son. And today at 75, she is still this beautiful woman. Baby, black don't crack, okay, when you take care of it. She's continuing her husband's legacy of having a free agency in professional sports. And she is a grandma. Next, we have the great Ozzy Davis, known as Rayford Chapman. He was born December 18th, 1917, and he departed from us February 4, 2005. He was an American actor, director, writer, and activist. And he was also married to the great Ruby D. They had three children together, and we've seen them in films throughout their career. He wrote and directed Cotton Comes to Harlem. It was part of this black exploitation genre in front of and behind the camera. And because he had a lot of political and social undertones in his works. One of the last things he played in was The L Word in 2004 to 2005. May he rest in peace. Next up, we have Nichelle Nichols, born Grace Dale Nichols. December 28th, 1932, she is an actress, singer, and voice artist, and best known for her portrayal in Star Trek. She also was in Chuck Turner in the 70s, but she was really known for her interracial kiss with William Shatner's Captain Kirk on Star Trek. And when she was in the movie Chuck Turner, alongside Isaac Hayes, she had a really progressive role as being very foul-mouthed and aggressive. There has been rumors that she is suffering from dementia, but she is still alive and well. Next, we have Dynamite Is My Name, (laughs) Rudy Ray Moore. Also known as Rudolph Frank Moore, born March 17th, 1927, and he did pass away October 19th, 2008. He created this character, Dolomite, this pimp that was just had the way with the words, very well spoken. He was a comedian, a musician, and actor, and producer, and he co-wrote the soundtrack to Dolomite. He also was in a few more titles throughout his career, like the sequel, Prank, Baps, and Watermelon Heist. There was also a 2019 film starring Eddie Murphy, 
who portrayed Dolomite in My Name is Dolomite. He's a complicated man, but no one understands him but his woman, John Shad. <laughs> I had to sing that, y'all. If you don't know who Isaac A. Hayes is, your parents have failed you, and parents, you have failed your kids. Isaac Lee Hayes Jr. was born August 20th, 1942, and he did pass away August 10, 2008. He was an American singer, songwriter, actor, and producer. He starred in Three Tough Guys alongside Fred Williams, and he was also in Truck Turner as well. And then later in the 80s, he was in I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, another black exploitation film. He is really known for his score musical soundtrack for Shaft. And he was also the voice of Chef on South Park all the way through 2005. To the man who brought us the classic Superfly, Ron O'Neill. He was born September 1st, 1937, and he did pass away January 14th, 2004, due to pancreatic cancer. He was an actor, director, and screen writer. And his young blood priest, a New York cocaine dealer, in the movie Superfly, in the sequel Superfly TNT in 1973. And he was the director for the sequel. And he is always going to be known as super bad for his work during that decade between the 70s and the 80s. There was also a Superfly remake that came out in 2018. And the last person I am going to cover in this video is James Milton Kelly. He was born May 5th, 1946, and he did die June 29, 2013 of cancer. He was an American athlete, actor, and martial artist. And he rose to fame for appearing in films with Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon. He also had Lee Rose in 1974's Black Belt Jones, and Through the Hard Way. Jim Kelly didn't really play in a lot of roles after the black exploitation days, but we are grateful for his contributions to history. Thanks for tuning in to my first segment of Where Are They Now? Black Exploitation Stars. If you would like to know any information about where someone is, just comment down below. Let's make this something fun. And remember, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.